Jeez, Mega Man, that's quite the bathroom break you took. Anyway, we're back again at Dr. Cossack's Citadel. Now, what stage are we even on? Looks like we're going to be going through the top of the fortress. So I think I know what stage this is. Yep, it's the auto-scroller. Uh, it's an auto-scroller section that's thoroughly okay. I will say, love the background as usual. But, uh, yeah, it's not a particularly tough auto-scroller. Which means it's an auto-scroller without much going on. <laughs> there is, unfortunately, not much of an in-between, huh? <laughs> like, it's usually either real frustrating to go through an auto-scroller, or just a little bit dull. I don't know, auto-scrollers are one of those things where, like, I can't quite suspend my disbelief, I guess? Or, like, it's very game mechanic-y in a way that doesn't feel great. It's, it's kind of hard to explain. Which is weird, because, like, nobody likes auto-scrollers. You know, any time one comes up, people are like, ugh, it's the worst, but I don't know. It's just kind of nonsensical. Like, why can Mega Man only move at this pace until this point? What is in front and behind him that is causing him to just move at a slower pace than I would progress through the level without the auto-scroller? Eh, so I guess all that is to say... I like auto-scrollers where there's actually something tangible keeping you in a small space, because then it feels like there's a reason for it to be there. Otherwise, yeah. Like, they're just doing this so that you don't go too slowly through the stage. But also, like, what, what are the obstacles that would make you do that? Why would I turtle through this stage if there were no auto-scroller here? I mean, I'd still probably be going pretty quickly, mainly because of these uh, platforms that rise when you're off of them but fall when you're on them. I mean, when you're uh, not on them, they stick around until you jump on them. They're completely stationary until you actually start doing things with them, so... I would actually typically try not to get on them until you need to, except right here, out of nowhere, <laughs> they kind of just say, fuck you, you have to speed through that part of the section. I guess the auto-scroller was all to make that one particular bit of platforming difficult. Alright, so, our next boss, the Cockroach Twins. Yeah, that name's kind of a spoiler, isn't it? So, Drill Bomb works well enough, the explosion effect really helps out, but, uh, it's not a particularly tough boss. Obviously, if you fall, you die, but their projectiles aren't too tough. The second one's a little bit better, of course, it's got more of a spread shot going on, two bullets per side, but it's still not a huge deal to dodge. I can mostly keep to the center and be fine. And we're done. See, not bad at all. I think Ferrishot's actually, like, decent at hitting them and also does decent damage. I think Ring Boomerang is also pretty good as well. But regardless... It's time for the final stage of Cossack's Fortress. Which, of course, means it's the final stage of the game. How could there possibly be more after this? And Oh man, I love that background. That's a cool-looking background. This one maybe a little less. Pretty good song, though. Not my one of my favorites, of course. Uh, let's see, well, I guess since this is the, um, final level of the game, I did mention at the start of this, I think, <laughs> I remember mentioning at the start, 
that uh, this is probably one of my favorite fortresses, or at least the beginning was. It's a pretty solid fortress overall. Of all the uh, Mega Man final stages, I'm fairly fond of it. It's got a pretty solid set of levels. Music's alright. Backgrounds are real good. I guess in the end, it's one of my favorites probably A, because of that consistency, but B, more because of the aesthetics, because like, man, that intro is so good. I love that beginning bit before we enter the fortress, where we're just in that snowfield. I mean, the enemies could have used to be a little more intimidating, I guess. Not to say slinkies aren't horrifying, but you know, maybe something a little bigger. Mega Man 1 did have, like, the most annoying enemies guarding the front front entrance, and that really does just give you the feeling of, oh, this is definitely the enemy's lair. They put a whole lot of guys that I hate right in front of it. It must be the end. But yeah, good aesthetic. Uh, love that area. And plus, I also like the fact that, like, it starts during the day with that snowfield, but now it's night and we see the moon in the sky. It's a really good backdrop for a final level, I gotta say. But I think overall, in terms of aesthetic, Mega Man 10 wins out. It'll be a while before we get to that, of course, but God, Mega Man 10 just has such a powerful final area. Alright, and so, the final boss is... a crane game. That's right, Cossack Machine is a crane game. To be honest, the crane aspect of it is nothing. Like, this is super easy to avoid. The bullets, though, are actually pretty unpredictable and as such managed to nail me pretty consistently. Uh, obviously, if you're playing this on your own and you don't care about getting a perfect run, this boss is a joke, but as somebody who prefers not to get hit when playing the game, hmm, gotta say this can be tricky. Also, yeah, Dust Crusher is one of the few things that can actually damage uh, Cossack, but, uh, oh, it seems that Cossack wasn't the villain. It was just that his daughter was kidnapped. Oh, man. Oh my god, it's Dr. Wily! Who could have guessed? And apparently Proto Man betrayed him? Are we on Ruby Sk Spears Cannon now? Oh well. Anyway, Dr. Wily said he's gonna break us, and then he ran away in his capsule, so, um, he's gonna do the eyebrow thing, and I guess we'll see him later. <laughs> 